Ready to die. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Welcome to Cred on Thursday night. But not between the roles. Why was I thinking between the roles? On Murder Hobo uh, Con, but that's not also <laughs> the right thing either. Uh, guys, I didn't prepare for any of this, and now I totally forgot what I was going to say. Oh, God. Always. Uh, I don't improvise, guys. Uh, no. No but. Nobody? No? Okay, that's just what? me. What? 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 You're all I confused. Know. I don't know. So let's get this party started, man. Let's get this party started. Guys, it is Thursday night. It is cred. Cthulhu rises. Everybody dies. And yet, 11 sessions in, each and every one of them <laughs> is mostly still alive. Uh, Cleo got Jeremiah killed. That's definitely her fault. We decided <gasps> already. What? Yeah, no, absolutely. It's not uh, dead. Yeah, close. It, Dead-ish, you know. You have to put like a uh, a um, thingamajigger into his mouth to have him actually say his last words. Didn't he lose like an arm and a leg? Yeah. An arm and most of both legs. Yes. Uh, yeah, both yeah, legs. Yeah, That's you right. guys have been carrying that dead weight around. Let me tell you. Oh, okay. I better not sit down, otherwise I'm going to forget what I'm doing here. Guys, this is Murder Hobo. Uh, First of all, follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter. If you want to take a look at our YouTube archive, you can do that. If you don't actually want to take a look at us, we do have a link below somewhere where you can get an audio-only podcast, but then you'll miss the cool, awesome jokes of, hey, why are you doing that? Don't do that. What the hell, Carol? What? That's, you can't make those gestures <laughs> online. And that's the kind of thing yes, you can, can on this channel. To to the audio-only Guys, uh, every other Saturday, we do a one-shot. Go ahead and hit us up at mhoboinc at gmail.com or again on Twitter. If you want to join in some fun discussions, perhaps you have an idea of what terrible things I can do to these four people in front of me. I'm always ears open. They just have to be better, worse ideas than what I have in store for them. So again, feel free to hit us up over on the Discord channel to do that. Second of all, uh, for those of you who are watching the Twitch stream, we have a new photo in rotation, a new piece of artwork from the fabulous D, uh, thanks to uh, Rob <coughs> for inventing Kyle Thulu, uh, drawn yes. by our wonderful artist D. Thank you again. I told her I would call her out right now. I'm doing it now. Yeah. Uh, and then over to... Gosh, I got to mention the store first where you can buy all that sweet M. Hobo Inc. swag. You can't find any cred swag because really what it is, and I keep throwing Carol <laughs> under the bus for this. You, well, you it's, can. Um, I mean, no, no, that's, no, no. That's, it is my fault. There's we no are coming swag. up with the greatest, most <laughs> wonderful logo design that will just blow everyone else out in the water. You know, I go around and I see, oh, M. Hobo Inc. shirt this, M. Hobo skateboard that. I go into people's houses and see their M. Hobo Inc. shower curtains. They what? scream at me, get out. I'm calling the cops. And I say, hey, I like that show, too, uh, as I am slowly hauled away and thrust into the back of a cruiser. Finally, we'd like to thank our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice. If your roles stink as bad as these guys, uh, get Pirate Dog Dice, because she will make dog poop dice. Uh, Go, Steve, go. Give them a good load of dice to make. And finally, if your game stinks, Adventure Sense. You can make it smell better or worse, depending on whether you get the tavern, the library, the road, or the sewers. Mm. Uh, there is a warning. You should not shove any of those up your nose and inhale oh. deeply. I don't... I don't know why they say that, but I don't say that. I do it all the time. Finally, they also have a Shine project over there at Oddfish Games uh, that will help you fill out your storytelling needs, answer the questions that you need questioned. 
Oh my gosh, guys, I am just a babbling mess today. Those are our sponsors, so I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> there are too many head nods right now. I need the confidence, <laughs> and I'm not getting it right now. <laughs> I, I think everybody but Cleo nodded their heads. I know. Well, she's not paying attention. <laughs> she's. Huh? What? I, she is paying attention. She is paying I'm attention. eating dinner, and my mom just messaged me to let me know they're, the pig's dying. The pig gets pig's sweet. dying? They have a pet pig, and she's not doing well, oh, so no. she's getting euthanized tomorrow. <laughs> and um, oh. where is this pig being sent to afterwards? Into the ground. Into the... Oh. I think like he's wrapped implying... Wrapped in he... leaves and coals? I... I... <laughs> Oh, like the boar we killed on the show. And the bears. And the and bears. The bear cubs. And the bacon. The piglets. Uh, but let's go around. I'm going to say awful things. So let's talk to Cleo with her mouthful. Hey, Cleo, why don't you introduce yourself? I'm Cleo. <laughs> well, where's my character sheet? It was just not. <laughs> I am a Asmar Sorceress and I missed <laughs> last game so I don't know where I am again yay you don't know where you are oh that's fine we'll fill you in here in just a little bit starting next with Riley go introduce yourself man so I'm playing Riley the uh, warlock and uh, Riley just does the best he can to help out. And uh, we'll see where that goes <laughs> with my nat ones. You know what? I am in, I'm confident I've actually uh, sent you a dice through the mail. Uh, don't ask how I got your, your address or anything like that. But it's all ones and a Riley just written right on it. It's beautiful. I think it'll Thank go you. well with this campaign. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I don't think it'll really change the campaign. It really won't. <laughs> but no. you know someone who <clears throat> does change the campaign for the better. Oh, hold on. Let me roll a dice. I'm going to say something nice about someone. I got to <laughs> figure out which one. Ah, oh, Carol. Anja, oh. you make this. It's so wonderful to have you along <laughs> changing and making things for the better. It's nice to have everybody here. Hi, everyone. My name is Carol. Otherwise, uh, let's see, I'm a longtime gamer, occasional GM, commissioned mini painter, who just started a painting stream on at Muses underscore touch on Twitch, um, where I paint minis and chat uh, with people. And for, but for right now, I am playing Anja Jaeger, my half elven ranger, monster slayer. Finally, you've been introducing yourself as that, and it's only been like a session or two that you've actually been a monster. Yeah, player. I know. I was like, I couldn't wait to get to third level because to me, that's what really begins in D D. But you know who's really been showing what subclass he's been choosing the entire time from the very beginning? That's DJ. That's Bran down in the corner. How's it going? Or up in the corner. I honestly don't know what the situation is. Let's see. Where is he? He is up in the corner. Up in the corner. Looking down at all of us from his Batman stance. Go ahead and introduce yourself. Hello, everybody. I am DJ. I play Bran, the Way of the Mercy Monk, uh, the physician. And I now have a full glove to cover up my uh, scaly hand. <laughs> 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 I'm just as excited as you are, Carol. I have no scales. That's why I'm excited, because I don't have any scales. <laughs> Yet. Uh, anyway. <laughs> oh, it's only a matter of time. All right. So, let's see. Uh, to catch wonderful, wonderful Caitlin Cleo up, she did We Missed You Last Time, so I made sure to cast all the spells you had. Uh, and uh, there's horrible things that are about to happen to you thanks to the other players. You'll find that on a bit. So last time we left off, you were fighting some bear mitt crabs. Uh, bear fish? What do we call them? Cray bears? Craw bears? Craw bears. That's the best name. You had fought and killed two craw bears and left their poor craw cubs alone uh, in the caves in your search for Jeremiah, who had been missing 
for over 12 hours at this point, I thought. You guys continued searching <coughs> through the caves, leaving the poor, defenseless craw cubs to their own devices. Uh, one of the players has already decided the fate of both of those craw cubs um, through random dice rolls. I'll, well, you might find out. You might, who knows. But you began your search down in the caverns where you found strange, twisted things. And luckily, through your seventh cavern searched, six cavern search, you managed to find Jeremiah with one arm missing and his calves butchered quite horribly to the point where he could not walk. <laughs> We'll we'll get to you in just a second, Cleo. Cleo. We'll we'll tell you. Don't worry. Asking why her character's almost dead. By the way, make sure you check off spell slots when you use them. Um, You find Jeremiah along with three other corpses, two humans, one gnome, all of them des... des... uh, not desecrated. It's starting to dry out and stored properly. Uh, Their organs have been removed, uh, cut up pretty badly, and they're all dead. Jeremiah was on his way. He was sick. Luckily, wonderful Cleo was there with a lesser restoration to bring down his temperature. However, the party had to carry him back out through the woods, uh, opting to go to the campsite where they had stayed the previous night instead of attempting to make it to the city of our scene because that may have been a little bit dangerous they get back to the campsite and find out that they are surrounded by deep ones not as many as they thought something they could handle so they decided to stay making sure that jeremiah would survive the night Uh, unfortunately they were then attacked by far more deep ones than they had found Cleo bravely goes out to save Anja's life with an amazing casting of burning hands that killed 17 or 18 of them. It was glorious. It was wonderful. Crazy, wow. right? I know, right? It was so impressive. How can I Wasn't forget that Wasn't that great detail? how you did that, Cleo? Yeah, right? How can I forget Maybe. that detail? <laughs> you are so humble about that, and that's what we appreciate about having you here, Clay, Caitlin. <laughs> uh, unfortunately, a big one just absolutely knocked her out, uh, and Anja was forced to shove a whole bunch of magic berries into her mouth. Now, I had warned the players that magic food is not necessarily a good thing to be eating. We have oh. other food we've been eating. It's of not course, our only course. source of sustenance, so that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> it's a healing freaking potion. Yeah, well, don't drink too many of those either. No, I'm kidding. Those are fine. It's the food you got to worry about. Um, in which case, they brought Cleo back to life. And as soon as they were about to be murdered or possibly dragged down into the ocean, uh, warriors from the woods came out surrounding everybody, slaughtering a few of the big deep ones and the small ones before running them off into the sea. And finally... A large woman with a very sharp pointing sword points it to Riley's throat. Are you the rest of the mutineers from Captain Kenza's ship? No, we're assisting Kenza and Aiden with our cargo task right now. So yes, you are the rest of the crew. We are part of the crew that did not mutineer. Kenza and Aiden can vouch. Are they nearby? Do you know yes, where the rest you. of the crew is? Yes, Bran. Uh, sorry, I didn't want to interrupt. But, um, oh, you're good. Bran actually will step up and says, we were the passengers. That we're to be sent here. <sighs> Things did not go well. I am Bran. Anja. Riley. I guess am I responding, Cleo? You're there and you're conscious, so yeah. I don't know. Okay. Do you yeah. guess you're responding your name is Cleo? <laughs> <laughs> yep. I do I do not mean to be curt, but if we are near the city, if it is 
if we are capable, we need to get this man medical attention immediately that we cannot provide here. Yes. She takes a quick glance down at Jeremiah before motioning and from out of the woods, uh, cloaked in similar gear, uh, pieces of mail with green leaves sticking out here and there. Uh, eight other uh, guards come out of there. Toa, mm. check him out. Who do you, we have? Riley, what? step into the fire, please. Light. Step hey. into the firelight? Step into the firelight. Okay. I do Who? that. Hey, wait a minute. Wait, 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 wait. Who are you? Who do we have the honor of addressing here? We are the guardians of Farzin. We make sure the people are safe, and we make sure that anyone who lands on our island is who they say they are, and we protect them from the corrupted. And again, as she says that, she is looking directly at you, Riley, and two of the other guards proceed to level crossbows your way. I suggest you do not move. And with okay. That, she sheaths her sword. And she comes right up into your face and she starts taking a look at you. Different coloration. Show me your hands. The claws and talons and scales. No webbings. <laughs> yeah, no webbings. Show me your teeth. Fangs. What are you? Uh, I am a half elf that has been slightly transformed by my patron since I'm you a warlock. Should get a new patron. No, I don't think so. And you're not one of those things from the ocean. Oh no, no, no! I definitely don't go with those guys. I mean, they were, they practically killed us. I think it's pretty obvious we're not with the things in the ocean. Yeah, I am pretty hurt standing here in front of her. So am I. I mean, I'm going to be walking up, by the way. As if I recall, I was still uh, partway down the beach. Sure. <clears throat> Make a persuasion check, Riley. And it's an important one, so certainly don't roll a one. Can he, can he have advantage on that for me and the stuff I've been saying? I already rolled it. 16. That's pretty good, though. Well, enough. Something as far gone as you would probably be worshipping and swimming under the ocean anyway. He's okay. Turns back. Start looking for salvage around the yards. What is wrong with your friend? Other than the missing arm, of course. The legs? Uh, Bran may have a better answer. He's our medical expert. I do not know the extent of any injuries aside from the obvious lacerations and amputations, as it were. But somebody or something took him and has some knowledge of human or humanoid anatomy. They did not use a scalpel or medical instrument, but rather some form of fang or claw. But with that fang or claw, they still did surgical work. We did also find a few other bodies where we found him. One was butchered professionally. Where did you find these The cave nearby. Underground? Goes into the mountain. Deep. We don't know if it goes directly just straight in or down, but the cave is unnatural. Can you describe them? And as we're having this conversation, the other guards are literally rummaging through your campsite looking for anything good. One of them is standing over Jeremiah attempting to tend and see how he's doing. I do keep a side eye on that just to make sure they don't 
injure him or be rough with him. Yeah, I will say with your medicine knowledge, you can tell that at least this guard, Toa, as uh, uh, the woman um, called him, does appear to have some knowledge with what's going on and is treating him carefully. We've done what we can here. I do not know what type of supplies we have, but we truly need a facility. At least a place I can work better than this camp. Also, it's clear this camp is not safe. We need somewhere safer. You think so? And she cleans off the blood from her yeah. blood. <laughs> and uh, like walking up holding like probably my rib cage. <laughs> Yeah, I, I do think so. <laughs> Can you take us somewhere safe? Toa, can he be moved? He turns. It'll be dangerous. We'll wait here for a little bit. Tend to yourselves. And when we're done searching, we'll carry Jeremiah and we'll lead you back to Farzine. How long? How long will you be here? And uh, long enough for like a short? I don't know if I have any uh, things left. I think the appropriate amount of time we will stay here will be what we yeah. uh, call a short. Although rest I don't know time. if I can actually let you roll hit dice um, if you actually have any. Let's see. Nope, I already used them. <laughs> I can eat my last. Let's see. She had six. I can eat my last four berries for healing. Sure. Oh, by the way, Cleo, roll a Constitution saving throw for me. Okay. Um, I'm still okay. saying that's fourteen. Okay, you're good. It's not as bad as you think, Carol. Calm down. <laughs> She's just uh, almost food, magic food, man. It's fine. I'll just wait until they play no. while the book I comes just, out. I'm sure they'll come out with something even worse. I don't even get it because we've had like normal food. It's not like we're subsisting off this. With magic berries, because each berry is a day's worth of nourishment. Oh, okay, that's a- jamming that amount into someone's. Well, I system. had to do it, or she's probably going to die. <laughs> You were yeah, no, I two, understand. You were two failed death saves, Cleo, by the way. Oh, yeah, oh, you so were. So I, I basically, <laughs> I, blew the, I blew an action to not hit the thing in front of us to friggin' try to save you. And that was the only thing I could do. I don't have, like, a cure spell. <laughs> oh, I appreciate it. <laughs> it would suck to come back and they're like, oh, um, your character died? I'm like, great. Hey, it's fine. You get to play Jeremiah now. You have no arm and you can't walk. Enjoy! (laughs) No. Um, Yeah. So you guys are given time to rest. Uh, The guards are searching through. They're grabbing stuff. (coughs) Anything that looks valuable. You, Bran. Could you describe the bodies you found in the cavern? Yes. And I will actually go into detail about the um, desiccation that I found on the two bodies in the alcoves and also the one I found on the beach. And I will point out roughly where it was when I saw it last time because it wasn't terribly far. I will also state that there were a couple other two other bodies, I believe on the shoreline, but they were not desiccated. That is not unusual. The sea monsters call up storms fairly frequently nowadays. Dead sailors wash ashore along with their things quite often. It's odd, though. We found three bodies in that cave. Only two of them were desiccated in the same way. The gnome corpse though we believe it might have been a local from what we gathered Uh, he was butchered 
not desiccated in the same manner. Gnome. If very I re- tan with white hair. If I recall, out of game, I think we grabbed like uh, one of his bracers or something, some type of identification aspect. I think one of you did. And if uh, you show it to her, I will mention it. I forget exactly who has it. If it was me yeah, or Riley or somebody, I don't remember who has it either. I don't think it was me. I want to say it was Riley. I'll kind of look over at Riley to see if he uh, produces it. I am going through my notes. <laughs> one of us, okay, one of us has it. Yeah. I know. All right, we well, produce it somehow. Well, yeah, I'll produce it. magically appear. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Carpet dimension, Loki style. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, shit, it was a hard fall. You broke it. Yeah, someone's watching Loki episode three. Yeah, so good. Yes, this is oh yes, yeah. I believe. That two are star gusts with farmer. Blah, blah, blah. Oh, you have their names, yeah. There yeah, you go. yeah. The last is gnome gear. Uh none of it is magic. There's some nice looking trinkets. Couple bracelets with Wilkemite embedded. Uh two two two. No one grabbed it. Oh, maybe we didn't. Uh, I thought we did. That's all right. We did see him, so if she's asking... You know what? Uh, no, I know we grabbed the items with the welcome item in it. Yeah, I'm going to assume I grabbed that, but either way, like it's, I'm not going to hoard it, so party's loot. That would explain what happened to the Stargust farm. They were also attacked by Deep Ones not too long ago. About a week or so. We also found some odd creatures. I do not know if they're native or somehow mutated uh, to this land. Looked like, like they were crab bears. Ah, you ran into the corrupted. They populate the island quite well. The monsters from below breed with them as I understand it. Hmm. Uh, okay. Oh, Sorry. Lord. That's right. <laughs> and now we're banned from Twitch. <laughs> I think at least one bad word is okay to say, right? Hey, that's actually not in the requirements for being a mature station. <laughs> Language oh, by the way, is not this is one of them. Mature audiences, everybody. Yeah, because we're not mature for sure. So somebody needs to be the adult in the room. Oh, gosh. It's Tim. He's actually over there. He he throws popcorn at my head when I go too far. <laughs> Unfortunately, he's imaginary and the invisible popcorn never stops me anyway. Jesus, Kyle. A very merry unbirthday <coughs> to me. To me? Okay. Uh, with that, uh, the Gosh, you haven't even asked her name. You guys are. I did. I asked who. I did ask her, and all she answered was the friggin' name of the organization. I when I said, "Who do I have the honor of addressing?" That was asking oh, her name. I apologize. You are speaking to Lament- Lieutenant Momoa. Momoa, like Momoa. like uh, Jason, Jason Momoa. Momoa. Except she is uh, dark, dark olive skin. Um, seems like she's from the island the sun has. Oh, yeah. Olive skin describes it well enough. All right, everybody. Let's get going. And two of the guards proceed to put a stretcher around Jeremiah to carry him. And with that, guys, I need each of you to roll a 1d6 and read them one at a time so I don't lose track. Anja. Six. Okay. Riley. Six. Okay. (laughs) 
Wow. This will be bad. Brian? Five. Five. And Cleo. What am I rolling? <laughs> A D6. Okay. I'm tired. Don't mind me. Sure. Okay, now we're minding you. Six as well? Oh, gosh. Guys, I don't do the one roll. I do the six roll. So oh, bad no, happens. we're all going to die. <laughs> Three sixes and a five? Oh, shit. Yeah, that was a fireball. <laughs> oh, that would, that would be, be an amazing fireball. roll. <laughs> from now on, whenever I roll fireball up the, uh, against the party, I'm having the party roll it for me. There you go. <laughs> uh, so you guys load up uh, and start heading into the forest when a brilliant orange ball comes roaring down from the sky and you all take 20... No. What? I'm kidding. <laughs> What's wrong okay. Oh, uh, yeah, that's right. I'd be dead because I have, like, no hit points right yes. now. <laughs> so, Lieutenant Momoa, <coughs> the rest of the guards, uh, along with Jeremiah in tow, and she starts heading into the jungle. They have lanterns, all of them covered, and they are walking at a fairly comfortable speed, and at this point... You haven't honestly had the time to observe the jungle through, say, like a tourist vision where you're not on the eyes for danger around every corner. Or you're about to step into a spike pit of lava. And as you travel through this uh, jungle, you hear noises that are very similar in some ways and utterly bizarre in others where you hear growl from maybe a large jungle cat and then the clicking and chattering of like a crab but something larger crab bear crab bear That are crab people. Crab people. Crab people. Yes! I know that's what you were going for, Bran. It's your favorite (laughs) song, isn't it? One of. (laughs) Crab people. Uh, Rock lobster. Rock lobster. Ooh, that's a good one. It's a good one. You walk along... And you see that the place is littered with those sharp rocks from the volcano. Deep, dense forest. And at one point, Lieutenant Momoa holds up a fist and the lanterns all go dark. And in the distance, you see torchlight. Seven or eight torches off in the distance. And the lieutenant starts murmuring with one of the guards. And he goes off, sneaks ahead off into the woods. And you wait there patiently. Have you guys talked about anything while you're doing this trek? Um, Actually, I want to ask her a question. Does she? Did they f- run into the mutineers? And what happened to them? Or Captain? Uh, I, I was going to butcher name. Kenzia. Kenza. Kenza. Oh, it's cigar. Bleah. It's Kenza. okay, Anja. Uh, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I know you butcher my name <laughs> enough. I mean, hey. Did they catch up? Did they find the mutineer? Because because they knew they knew about the mutineers. I mean, I guess I could say, how did they know about the mutineers? Your friends on the crew came into the town yesterday. 
They were acting quite suspicious, and they were locked up. Especially when their cargo did not come with the captain. Fearing the worst, we locked them away, and we went searching for your Captain Kenza. And ran into her and your first mate, as well as the cook, limping down the beach, uh, attempting to follow tracks. They were nowhere near where they were supposed to. We sent them back with a few of the guards, but they mentioned that you were looking for your uh, friend here. Yeah. Snap in the woods. Turn to look. She thought you might be in more danger. So we came out to find you. As well as search after the storm we had last night. She was right. Clearly. She's been around before. And thank you. I don't know how much longer we could have held out. That was Uh, a tough fight. They all are when you roll natural ones multiple times. (laughs) No, there was just... I didn't roll any nat ones, I don't think. With that, the guard sneaks back up. It's a lamprey tree. All right, we'll skirt around it. What now? What is it? A lamprey tree. Those corrupted things not only mess with the animals, but the trees as well. It looks like they're torchlight, like people who might be lost in the jungle, but that's just to lure it in. It's carnivorous. And if you see something like that, suggestion is to wait, because it might also be one of those creatures. Don't follow strange lights you know nothing about if you come out here during the dark. Let's go. And you guys once again set off, avoiding these huge pits where if you look down there, you see these dark pitch black mushrooms growing in these caverns that are hot steamy vents sulfur in the air coming out of them is there Uh, never mind I had a thought and then I thought better of it oh come on nope Uh, okay wisdom character (laughs) (laughs) you all die um, did Cthulhu rise? Yes, he did. <laughs> Shh. And the sky lights up, and then the fireball comes down, and tentacles reach out from underneath the sulfur ascent. Uh, you continue walking there for a while, and the guard, Toa, calls for a halt this time. And... Bran, with your perception, you see him going after this plant, taking a bunch of the leaves from it, combining it with some water from his canteen and just smashing it up. And you see him literally shove it into the empty spaces uh, uh, that used to be where um, Jeremiah's calf muscles, literally closing that up. Wow. That should help prevent any infection as well as any of the muscle moving too strangely. What plant is that? Shit, I didn't think you'd ask the name of the plant. <laughs> well, we're going to want to pick a lot. We're going to want to pick some of that. We want to take notes on this stuff. Sure. For surviving this trek. I will ask actually for a bit of it and probably the branch too. I'd like to try to get some of the sap. Sure. You go ahead and do that. You collect that amount. Um, And if you like, you can collect enough to where you can refill your med kit back to full if you want. Yep. I'd also like to also collect some for just research purposes. And you've got it. Cool. And with that, what's the name of the plant? Damn it! Are you guys really going to force me to do this? Yeah, I was taking notes. I was waiting. 
All right, hold on here. You're holding up his notes. <laughs> I am holding up his notes. Screw you guys. Here we go. Yeah, I'm like holding up my little tablet with my finger out, waiting. You're gonna give him like a a, a compulsion if you don't uh, answer him. Uh, this is what we call Ramosa, or what you might call on the island uh, Piper Tamimus. Don't judge me, Caitlin. When you're weird that? looking. <laughs> also, I did not uh, write that down, so Riley, give that to me in the chat when you can. Hypertimosis. Wow. Okay, that works for me. All right. And with that, they get up and gather on their way. Call hyper to minus. That is exactly. Thank you. That's exactly what, what is it called? Hyper to minus. On the island, it's called Ramosa, or what you would call hyper to minus, which is something to help uh, um, flesh from serious wounds become too stiff. Uh, otherwise, they can't be healed uh, through cleric magic later on down the road or regrown tissues. And he slaps some on the uh, arm there where that's fallen off, but I ain't going to do it. Gonna need some duct tape for that one. Gonna need some duct tape for that one. You begin traveling again, and this is taking literally all night. You awoke at midnight, and it's getting to three or five in the morning. Rays of light are starting to begin to shine down in certain areas of the rainforest. Riley, Bran, actually, what is the passive perception, Carol and Caitlin? Because I know, I know Bran sees everything. Passive perception is 14. 15. 15. Okay. So Riley, Cleo, and Bran, um, you see through shafts of light a statue in the distance. And as you are approaching it, Bran, you start seeing the telltale signs of more desiccated flesh, although this is hard as rock, very similar to the one you found on the beach. Um, standing, well, sitting at about 15 feet tall, long arms stretched out, ending in claws with fins on it. And again, that angler fish face superimposed upon what looks to be a gigantic orangutan sitting in these stone ruins scales also hardened uh, you see a massive orangutan and before you even get the chance to look Mo says that would be the monkey king. Is it a statue or a creature? He was a creature. Son Goku. He came away with the wasting disease. He used to be quite a lot more trouble. We weren't even able to come down here. But now that he's dead, the rest of his followers and his corrupted monkeys tend to him and feed it on occasion. And you see roll a uh, give me insight checks. And Riley, or not Riley, I apologize. Anja, you can join in on this one if you like. Because even you see this, because you are passing within, say, 30 feet 
of this massive creature. Nat 20. Very nice. Woo. 15. Mm, I'm not paying terribly a lot of 14. attention. 14. I believe that's only a three on the die. My dice rolls are still going to sick. Yeah, wow, that's terrible, Insight? guys. Insight? Insight is only seven. Insight is only seven. Uh, Bran, Cleo, looking three. at this a little bit closer, and you look up at the face of this thing, and it's these two large, bulbous, black eyes, and its mouth is open in a scream of rage with these long, needle-like fangs jutting up from underneath, and a few down below and this primal rage, it seems to have had its features frozen. Riley, what is the total of your insight? 22. 22? Yeah, that's good enough. That's not rage. That's fear in its face. And oh. as you stare at this, you can see where there's still bits of food hanging off its face and it looks like something has been shoving something into its mouth I cast mage hand and uh, try and reach into his mouth with the magic hand and, and pull out whatever may be in there as you go about doing that lieutenant do not touch him and she points out to the trees. And as you look, you see various other apes and monkeys peering out at the trees at you. Each one, again, either half a black eye or both eyes are black. Gills growing, hair shedding, scales reappearing. And they appear to be watching you. They still worship it as a god, and if you mess with it, you'll kill us all. Uh, good point. Dispel <laughs> Mage Hand. <laughs> <laughs> How do they get corrupted? Yes. How do they get corrupted? The sea creatures have been living around the island for quite some time. All right, let's keep going. And they've been slowly intermixing themselves with the local creatures and fauna. We're not quite sure how we did that, but at some point there was a man from the mainland. He came out here studying the creatures and the corruption He seemed to think that the seemed to think that the sea creatures would take some of them and give themselves to them, mate. Force procreation. Yes. Procreation, yes. It does seem the creatures odd, would such... come out normal to begin with, but eventually all of them would succumb to that monster's heritage. And eventually they'd just be driven mad with the rage of it. Fairly aggressive until they eventually went down into the sea itself. The gentleman, gosh, and give me half a second here. I'm going to have to look up a name. Bob. It is Bob. No, it's Stephen, obviously. Guys, come on. Be serious about this. It's always Steve. <laughs> it's, it's always Steve. Dang it. Let me see. Oh. Yes, there we go. A gentleman by the name of Mundo Fenn came out here studying them 
seem to think there might be a way to cure them somewhere on this island. Never found it, and he eventually left. Frustrated. I'd like to... Have I heard of this name before? I do not know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Is this a uh, forgotten information? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hold on, hold on. No, 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 no. I, I, didn't, I didn't mean from him, per se, from actual like medical uh, or study itself. No, no, no. I oh, do remember Mundo Fen. I do remember Mundo Fen. I say I know this name, don't I? Well, personally, yeah. not through other individuals. Not through the fact that you went through his manor house and oh yes, talked yes, to yes, him yes. in it's Fen Manor. That's right. Okay. Yes, you're right. Yeah, I'm just saying I may have forgotten. Yes, I, <laughs> that's yeah. what's hilarious is he may. Yeah, he may have. So forgotten. I redact the question. Was it on that day? Did you forget all of Fen Matter? Um, yes, I blocked it out of my mind. Not you, <laughs> Riley. I think I think Riley... I did block out Fen Manor. Is okay. that one of the sessions? That I thought you been... lost the repository. You lost. Oh, you! I did. I lost the first night when he first introduced us. Yeah, to no, Bob. you didn't. No, we, you I remember did, Fen? I did Manor. realize that we did go through a Fen Manor, and I probably saw his name when I read the journals and such. You keeping up, Caitlin? Trying to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mundo Fen was the man you met in Rizante who was very hideously fishified uh, and attempted to kill you as you fled from okay. the town of Rizante. I will um, look at the lieutenant and say, how long ago was he here for? How long was he here for? Or how long ago? Uh, was he how here? long ago was he here, and for how long exactly? Yeah, about ten years ago, maybe five. Honestly, the jungle starts looking familiar. He wasn't here for maybe a month or two. No one ever stays for too long. You either have the people who come crash here and stay here for the rest of their life, or they are here and passing through quickly. Do you know him? We met him. In Rizante. Doing well, I presume? Mm, he, he looked very... Hub, so I don't imagine. He looked very fishy, and um, there's a cult of... I wonder, if, I wonder if it probably is all connected. There's a cult of Dagon in that town, and it seems to have a pretty strong grip upon the folk there. We knew it was Dagon, right? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they get everywhere, don't they? They're corrupted. So I'm going to assume he was, well, I mean, I kind of figured he was some sort of corrupted with the fishy look. Is he becoming one of those deep ones? As or said, power. All of them do. Doesn't the matter monkey how King you start off with. Oh no, he was, but he was also. Uh, gosh, I called it the wasting disease. Uh, he was under its influence, and then got the wasting disease. This is now essentially a godlike statue for the rest of the things near him. This wasting disease. What are the symptoms and the outcome? Well. Like him, eventually you catch it. Honestly, we don't know much about it. If we do see anyone who's come down from it, they're already been dead for a while. So there are no telltale signs until actually immediate onset. That's a very interesting question. Have you ever witnessed anybody die from it, or have you only found remains? We had a gentleman come into the hospital, not hospital, to the doctors before she died. He came in, he was stark raving mad. 
dehydrated. Wouldn't touch a glass of water and he had to be restrained. Couldn't sit still. Uh, when I came to get him the next morning, he was dead. Desiccated like he'd been left out in the sun for weeks on end. And you're still marching through the rays of sunlight are getting brighter and brighter. And just like that, you step out into the sunshine, blinded by this searing light of the sun mm -hmm. rising up. And as you clear your eyes out, rising before you on top of these bluffs is this huge red wall with little green inlays being built uh, by quite a few workers. If you look to your far right, and it is this massive walled city. Green, wait, green, like Wilkemite green? Wilkemite green. What's the red? Local stone. And you can see white marble in there as well, which is some of the stuff that's on your ship that uh, Captain Kenza was bringing with her. And the lieutenant steps to the side. Welcome to Vazin. You made it. Most don't. Yay. Yay. Um, and not, after listening to all this conversation about wasting diseases and insanity, I'm not 100% sure yay is the right term. But you've how long have you been here? I've lived here all my life. Okay. And you seem to do fine. Sure. Stay in the walls and I know how to handle myself. You certainly do. And with that, she leads you to the walls. She takes a look back at Jeremiah. Um, it seems when the plant went on there, his uh, fevered temperature, while still high, has remained stable, hasn't gotten much higher. Let's get him into the city as quickly as we can. And she points off and in the direction where they are constructing this wall around the city. She leads you. Greets the guards as she escorts you. The rest of Captain Kenza's crew. Come on in! And you weave your way through these workers as they're piling stone upon stone, building this large wall around the city. And as you turn the corner, you see Farzine itself. There's uh, a lot of mixed architecture from Joe Pet, from Arul Katan itself. Um, these tall, um, white buildings. In some cases, you see what must be the natural um, island inhabitants where it's bits of bamboo uh, and leaves over top in a slum area. Uh, and the largest thing you see, and probably something you forgot about, Riley, is this 100-foot-tall woman standing above the whole city. With one blue and one green light? With one orb in her hand that shifts between blue and green. Oh, that's right. Shining bright uh, and warm down upon the city. Even as the sun rises, you can still see the light emanating from it. And as you walk into the city behind her, you see the hill the side of the volcano that makes up the island of Farzine smoke billowing out from the top and you made it to Farzine everybody yay 
I actually look at I look at uh, Lieutenant Momoa and I go, the volcano is awfully close. I mean, has it ever? It has not buried the city in lava or ash. The ash is part of the good thing that the island gives to us. The priest of Fett assure us that it's not going to explode anytime soon. But every few years or so, it, yeah, it explodes, I would say. Showering ash onto the forest, depending on which way the wind blows. Jeez, oh Pete. <laughs> Wait, she's got one orb or two? One. 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 That alternates between blue and green. Mm-hmm. Let yeah. me see. All right. That is... Boop, 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 boop. Make sure that's good enough for you people. Uh, it's yellow diamond. Got it. <laughs> sure, we'll go with that. Actually, that was White Diamond with all the crazy hair. Mm-hmm. Your crewmates are in the stockade. They're there waiting for the magistrate to come in. I don't know whether he's in or not. Your captain is... Oh, my goodness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I'm on my mind. Oh, you stupid turd. Your captain is at the port of call. Uh, the white building over there with the roof. Perhaps we should go there first? That is up to you. I mean, to stitch. Um. I think it's up to her to decide what she wants to do with her crew. I look to Jeremiah and then I look to the lieutenant. Where where will you be taking Jeremiah? We lost the town doctor a while ago. We're supposed to be getting a new one here anytime soon, but so far they haven't come in or washed up on shore. So at the moment, we'll be taking him to the house that used to be hers, and Toa here will check on him, and we'll leave someone with him overnight. I will go to that house. I am a medical professional, and I kind of like, um, kind of rustle my sack a little bit. I do not know exactly why I was sent here. I need to speak with my contact. But Who's whether... your contact? Let me get the name right. Marcus, Marcus Con- uh, Cornwall. Cornwall or Corwell? I'm sorry, Corwell. Yes. All right. With that, she straightens up. Commander Corwell is who you're here to see? Yes. If you wish, you may come along with me. He should be at the stockade or at the magistrate's office. I'd rather tend to Jeremiah currently. When I know he is safe, for the time being, and then I will see him. I have another question. Do you have a place of worship to the Raven Queen here? No, we don't. Hmm. The main oh, no. worship goes to the Lady in the Light. Her priestesses are not too far from the statue itself. And if you go up there, that is where the priests of Fet go to appease the mountain and she points and outside the city wall you can see this trail and this from this distance minuscule building built into the uh, volcano wall I see from the outside not the inside just so we're clear 
that's where the sauna is on the inside of the volcano. Uh, this may seem a weird question, but do you burn your dead or bury them? Buried. Where would the graveyard be? If I'm going to find a fo- uh, any followers of the Raven Queen, that is the most likely place I would probably encounter any grave tenders, such like that. With your passive insight, other than the mention of Commander Corwell, when you mention the cemetery, this is probably the most uncomfortable she is. Which none of the rest of you catch. As she is a very stoic person. The cemetery is that way, but there are no tenders to it. We leave our dead there. And we leave them be. That is the tradition. That is the island law. Don't go into the cemetery. Curious. Curious. Hmm. I will respect your law. Though I would like to know more about it later. You can ask Commander Corwell if you prefer. Uh, Very well. Please. I would like to get Jeremiah to a safe and comfortable place. Sure. Toa and the two guards carrying Jeremiah on a stretcher. Toa leading the way. Ambles off into the town. What are the other three of you doing? I think I want to rest. I mean, I am I'm not feeling very good with me and my how many hit points have I got? Like I have a few more they did because I did a good bury. You make yeah. any, they make any friggin' saving throws there, just to be fair? Because I get four. I I have, um, I have ten hit points right now. Are you trying to heal know. right now? No. I'm uh, okay. what, I want to do, I think we need a long rest. Yeah, I, I, I say we go find uh, no, Kenza, have... see, if, see if she found uh, a place for we, us to stay. Well, yeah, we did we, get a short we rest. Could even, go... if, even if you didn't spend hit dice, you still had a short rest. Yeah, we did have a short rest, but I mean, we need, I need a long rest. Um, and... Before I leave, I will touch Anja and heal her a little bit by using a Kai point since I got them back with a short rest. Yeah, I don't think I get much back with the short rest. I can, I can know how to destroy you all now. To just never rest. I will put that in though, actually, that we did get a short rest. Yeah, we're we're at that. Guys, go ahead and as we enter town, give me get back eight, Carol. Okay, that's that's better. Give me a constitution saving throw, all of you. As you have been awake for quite a long yeah, period of time. That's the other reason why we need a long rest. Twelve. Oh, good. Jesus Christ. Nope, this is not good. Uh, six. Exhausted. Mm. Fifteen. Good. Cleo. You, uh, Fourteen. Fourteen. Also okay. Uh, mm-hmm. Lieutenant Momoa sees you, Anja. Point one point of exhaustion. One point of exhaustion to go with your one of dread. I had to <laughs> a point of dread kicking around. That's right, the both of you and Brand do. Um, the lieutenant looks at you. If you go over to Kava's respite, they have a drink that will certainly wake you up in the morning if you need it. But like I said, your captain is over at the port of coal. I want to go see they, her. There, they have boarding houses as well. Well, they'll kill two birds with one stone. I want to go see her uh, anyways and see what she thinks about uh, uh, what we do with the crew that's all locked up. 
and I want, I need rest. Okay, Riley, what are you thinking? Besides uh, robbing the whole city. No, 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 no. I, that's not this character. That was my last character. <laughs> uh, this character would probably want to explore, but he's also exhausted. So uh, I say rest as well. Okay. Go to, Wait. what do you call it? Port of Call? Port of, Port Port of Call. Port of, okay, yeah. And Miss Cleo. When are we gonna like go to the sauna? Yeah, when are we? Just jump into the volcano, man. What are they called? Uh, priests of Fet? Yeah, let's uh, let's go check out their sauna. <laughs> I need to go to the sauna. You do realize they're probably just getting high off the fumes, right? That that's their spiritualness, most likely. I'm totally cool checking that out. <laughs> <laughs> need a little detox and rest and all at once. Oh so, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so, if we're going for rest first and ending up with the captain, you guys end up going to the port of call, the three of you. Um, we'll get to you, Bran, in a bit. I was like, is my math wrong? There's definitely four of us. <laughs> there used to be five, but then you let him get kidnapped, Cleo. No, he made his own choices. That's he has true. his own free will. He's his own grown preteen paladin. Pretty, he can pretty, do whatever yeah. he wants. Pretty Pat sure me. he didn't really have a choice in the matter, judging from the Everyone tracks is. that I saw. No, he was he was dragged away against his will. Okay. So you three end up going to the port of calm. Again, going through the city. Um, a lot of humans, um, again, that olive skin is where you see most of them, but there are occasionally dark skin, sun kissed dwarves, gnomes, uh, and elves along the lake. You see different structures from, uh, nations such as Austria, uh, Matrolk, um, Chopet, uh, Uskin. And Chavesk, as well as newer Arukatan buildings, which are those ones built out of stone. Uh, you see Jopet buildings appear to have been a mixture of bricks made from the sand, possibly down from the beaches itself. Uh, strong wooden houses that are familiar with Uskin, where the wood is dark, dark red, uh, and the grain of it, despite the fact that it's a hardwood, is just absolutely massive um, with open windows and open doors. You eventually find yourself into what looks like the native style of buildings, which is, again, bamboo, thatched roofs, uh, a two-story and very welcoming, huge open space uh, to the door. Uh, you see two, two women behind the bar, working the place, feeding. Uh, and as you're walking in there, they're literally slopping water on this drunk dwarf who has apparently fallen asleep underneath a table. Get out of here, ball truck. No drunkenness in here. Get out. Oh, I'm, I'm getting out. Don't, don't get your tidies in a twist. Mm -hmm. And he just walks out only to collapse right in front of the door. New travelers. What can I do for you today? Uh, we would like rooms if you have them here. We heard you had them here. Or could point us in the right direction. And two, have you seen a Captain Kenza? Kenza? I freaking screwed up every time. Kenza? Yes, Captain Kenza and First Mate Pasala got a room earlier yesterday. If you want a room here, price is six silver pieces or ten for double occupancy. 
If you'd like, we serve breakfast. There's kava over there. It'll help wake you up in the morning. There's wine. If you're hungry, we have meals. And if all of you are eating together, that'll be five gold pieces. But you have to let us know beforehand. I'm Guzza, by the way. This is my wife, Kezin. Nice to meet you. And she points over to Kezin. Kezin. Oh, I thought she was right there. Um, oh, she's behind the bar. Oh, okay. Getting another bucket to throw over at uh, the dwarf again. Uh, and she is homely, short, stockier. Um, while uh, Guza herself is a very tall, willowy woman. You know, we haven't gotten any treasure of money or anything, have we? No, it's like you've been out on the ocean. You did rob the Fen Manor, though, so good for you. I didn't. Oh, that's right. That's right. Gave you the opportunity. You didn't take it. And I want to say I'm proud of my players for doing that. Because they would have really had this uh, 120 gold piece worth pearl with me that I got from somewhere. (laughs) (laughs) Actually, you know what? I'm a Fuck, I'm a ranger. I don't need to actually stay in here. I honestly actually don't have any I don't have any money. I gave it all to save that kid. <laughs> We've got no money back to replace it. So I go, you know what? I'm gonna go find a place where I'll be comfortable and um uh enjoy. Although I do go look for the captain. She's up in a room right now. She hasn't come down yet. Uh, what room? First door to your left. First mate is on the second door to your right. Okay. So then I will I'll, I'll walk up and go knock on a door. We can cut to them. Sure. Cleo, Riley, are you following? Or are you just hanging down at the bar with the ladies? I'm asking for a room. Yeah, I'm like, I'm, <laughs> I'm asking if they have a spa here. A spa? Yeah, a spa. A sauna. Massages. <laughs> some reflexology for my feet. What do you understand about developing nations? They can have all the services they want. No, no, no. This is like, <laughs> this is a very early in development city. Massage therapy has existed for a while. You're not going to find a luxury spa in the middle of this backwater hole. As cool as that would be. Maybe they have some fancy little waterfall. and it's You know, a There's naturally probably occurring spa. A heated bath from the volcano. Mm-hmm. There's probably, I mean, there probably could be a spa open. There's probably an opportunity to open up one here. I mean, you know that there's the right types of stones that are good for removing uh, dead skin. Pumice. And, yeah, they have pumice everywhere. Uh, uh, Cleo. Heated water from the volcano. This may actually be a perfect spa. Oh, my God. Guys. What about, like, hot springs? Are there hot springs here? Or, you know, like, maybe there's, there's like, mud you can put on that's good and opens up your pores and such? All natural. Yeah. I mean, you, hey, if there's no spa here, you may, maybe you can make one. We have to oh, get money look at that. This. Cthulhu rises. Everyone dies. We'll make a killing. <laughs> That'd be great. <laughs> that's what Cthulhu needed and like you know what I got a spa Everything's hey, you know it. what I have been grumpy I have been feeling absolutely <laughs> terrible this dead skin been such a t- Cleo thank you this is everything I've ever <laughs> you got a couple of people with these giant paint brushes who are painting Cthulhu's claw fingernails oh my lord that would be hilarious Oh my gosh, the yellow just absolutely brings out the green and That's my why he rose. <laughs> and he feels better and he's happy and everything's he's gonna, good. He's gonna get all pretty looking for his show call. Calls to Cthulhu. Calls for Cthulhu. 
which is pretty well, I feel hilarious. Like it's like a radio show, and people call in like, "I'm looking." There crazy. is no, there really, <laughs> there really is a thing called calls. It's calls for Cthulhu, right? Uh -huh. uh, and it's hilarious. It's a puppet Cthulhu, and he answers calls. It's an old. It's from a few years ago, but it's hilarious. I wish they did more. So, anyways. Guys, did I say this was a horror campaign? Yeah, no, we're actually going to. It wouldn't. We're turning it this. It wouldn't town be around. a murder hobo game if we didn't send the plot off the rails. I mean, <laughs> come on, that's Absolutely. the way it works around here. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I'm, I, waiting, I'm, on I'm waiting on them. Before I went uh, to the captain's yes. store, uh, but that tells you that uh, if you want <laughs> nicer digs. You might actually want to check out the albatross there, although they're a little bit more rules heavy than even we are. To Cleo, if you were looking for a nicer place to stay. I just need to sleep at bath and massage and a facial. <laughs> and Riley, are you following to talk to Captain Kenza? No, I ask for a room. I want a room. Oh, yeah, yeah, for yeah. A room. six uh, silver pieces. Six silver pieces. Yeah. Let's just check my. Let me hand that over. Me. Let's see how that works. Six silver. How many nights are you staying? Uh, one for now. First roar on the right is yours. Awesome. Thank you. Mm -hmm. uh, you might want to wait. We're going to have to clean it up a little bit. The tenant who is staying there hasn't come back in a few days. And. For the rules, we keep your stuff. Anyway, uh, so Anja, you go up there, you knock on the door. After a while, you see Riley come up. Or sorry, no. Uh, uh, wow, my goodness. Names are so hard to keep in. Kekin comes in to clean out the door and the room right behind you. Terrible smell comes out of that room. Oh. That one, so... I probably could yeah, feel sorry for the guy who has to stay in there. <laughs> uh, and Captain Kenza opens up her door. <sighs> there you oh, are. thank God. We're, we're... Did the uh, Lieutenant Momoa find you? Oh, thank God. Thank you for sending her. Yes, we were in <sighs> trouble. Give me half a second and I'll meet you downstairs if you like. That would be fine. So Close I'll head door. back downstairs. She prettys herself up. She looks fabulous. Now she sword armor gleaning goes. She grabs uh, uh, first mate Pasela, and the three of you four, if Riley decides to join, uh, come down to sit down at the table there. So were you able to find Jeremiah? Yeah, yeah, we did. Um, he's not in good shape though. We found him in a cave with three others. Uh, and he was he was missing what his left arm. Yes. Somebody basically captured him and tortured him. Left arm. Took off his left arm and cut away like his hacked away at the muscles in his leg. His, his legs is what I can best describe it as. He is alive, and he is here. Uh, Brand was tending to him. Speaking of, Bran was tending to him. Segway. Segway over to Bran. Uh, you are walking through the city, much like them. You see the different architectures and stuff like that. You end up actually going through the market a little bit ways uh, where people are selling fish, trinkets, um, rations that look like they may have been scavenged from the, uh, the beaches. Um. Uh, think think Hawaii. Lots of canned ration foods. There are some fresh fruits. There's bananas here. There's more of that eye fruit um, that you'd seen <coughs> hanging around there. Um, but the crowds split apart for you uh, with the guards that come in. Um, you also see in uh, a rule katan armor um, you see they are indeed from the homeland 
guards and soldiers who are keeping an eye out of everything going along there. They do have a small pin with a circle and a uh, what looks to be a bird on it that is also the symbol that you see um, the island guards have on their chest plates. Um, in some cases, they're going around collecting money from the merchants. Um, but you see the heavy presence, presence that is Arul Katan trying to take over the city. Um, Do I see... Does, does the general populace seem healthy? Or do I see a lot of uh, destitutes? There's not very many destitutes. It does look like everybody is eating. There is, with a general insight that you have, there is um, this layer of concern that is um, over the general population um, you'll hear whispers of, uh, did you hear about Stephen last night? He, he started hearing voices outside of his door and went to look. No one was there. Or, yep. Fresh fruit. We just got this off of Stargust Farm. It's the last batch he'll ever make. And people clamoring around there to get this bottle where there's these roots uh, floating around in it, this brown, murky liquid. Um, it seems the population knows they're eh, kind of they're in a bastion where they're being attacked from all sides. And While none of them necessarily look happy when you see that the uh, Arukatan tax collector is coming by. You know, it's like, ah, uh, okay. But it's the sigh deep, like, okay. For the greater good, here's the money. You know, these, you guys are the saviors of Farzine. A rule Katan is in general, without order here, chaos could quickly descend and just overrun the city. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Uh, eventually, you find yourself going out through another gate on the other side of the wall and back outside the walls of Farzine, where you come across on a, a little built up hill. The sides are very steep, very difficult to kind of get up there. Uh, an iron wrought fence surrounding it. You see a sign swinging the crafty cauldron. Uh, it looks in not the best shape whatsoever. Um, one of the Signs on the side, there's one on each corner of there. One of them is falling and hanging by one hook there. Uh, the windows uh, have been boarded up. And with a heavy kick, the front door uh, swings open. What you thought might have been locked, but in truth, it was just the wood swelling up inside the door. I ask, how long has the doctor been gone? Uh, about six months now. Hmm. Very well. Luckily, you're within the guard houses of the gates, so while it is outside the walls, it's more or less safe and whatever creatures try to come in here are going to make enough noise and be slowed down enough that we'll be able to rush out here. I will, of course, be staying with Jeremiah here for a bit. That is very good. Mm -hmm. I may take a little bit of time to get used to. I'm 
not used to staying in such a state. Yeah. Is it a large place or like a little place? Like, does it look like it used to be grand or was it always meant to be drab and small? Um, from the outside, it does look small. Um, think of, yeah, just a one story home almost. You walk in there, there's a front room with uh, several chairs, some broken here, that leads to uh, a side room where if you were to go look at that and where they place Jeremiah, this would be, say, an operating room or where the doctor would see people. There are some cauldrons in the back where potions might have been brewing. The smell, a lot of dried but rotted herbs are hanging here and there. Despite that, and despite the outwardly appearance of the place and the rotted uh, food stuffs or herb stuff, um, the floors are relatively clean. Doesn't look like there's been any animal life that you can see in there. And there ends up being a cellar down below um, which leads into a much larger home space. And so looking at it, the floor on the ground level here appears to be where the person operated her or his business out of and then slept down in the cellar where there's three rooms, bedrooms, um, kitchen area, that kind of place where the living quarters actually were. Is there any type of study or library of medical uh, knowledge? There are about five books or so. Three that you would recognize um, having studied medicine yourself. Um, one that appears to contain um a lot of information for the healing magics. So whether you would find that useful or not. Okay. Uh, and then one you've never read before that seems to be a personal, uh, personal journal or at least printed pages with lots of notes written down here and there. All right. I will, while he's tending to setting Jeremiah up, I will take a quick stock of uh, what medical supplies are left here. <laughs> and see what is useful out of it. Sure. And what might be useful to help Jeremiah. Bandages, uh, also um, wraps, things like that as well. Uh, you would find, um, as far as Jeremiah is concerned, and we can go over the other stuff later, you find a well that leads down past the living area down below. So in the operating chambers areas, there's a well where you can get water that is just absolutely cold, compresses for Jeremiah. Um, and with the help of Toa, you are able to uh, keep him somewhat healthy. Time will tell how well he mends afterwards. Um, I would ask Toa at some point to probably head into town and get some food. And I will literally drop the three silver and eight copper I have total as buy whatever you can with this. We need to get him a broth. We need to get him some sustenance if he is going to make through. Oh shit, you're with my book. You can't get a room. I don't know. If and you has to three room. bedrooms. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm all set. Oh, it's sure if you're just going to stay there. 
We'll have Bran to is the doctor the of Farzine now. All right. Yeah, that's so cool. Yeah, you you. And cool. also secretly established a temple of the Raven Queen out here. <laughs> Amazing. That would be wouldn't really cool. Um, I mean, priest. let's see. No, it doesn't happen. No, uh... but I, I'm sure you don't mind telling people about the Raven Queen. Oh no, more totally. I, I, have, I have quite. Uh, I have uh, religion trained. So, do we need a sign that says uh, "Ask me about"? Well, I have self. Ask I me about self- death. No, I, I know salvation through the Raven Queen. Ask me how. Well, here's the thing, and being the doctor is the best because they're going to bring their Fine, sickly salvation. out here, and as they're dying, you can console their loved ones and convert them. Yeah, find salvation with the Raven Queen. Ask me how. They've gone to a better place. <laughs> oh, okay. Lord. Uh, Toa tells you, I have to report back to the stockade. It looks like he's doing well here. But I will stop by the port of call if any of your friends are there. I'll make sure I send them out with the uh, supplies for you, okay? Um, yes, and give them this money I so will... they can buy something. Um, and don't let Riley buy any of the food. Tell them to that. <laughs> Scaly one, right? Yes. <laughs> he tends to Not have sure lots of it on which, which, uh, which potatoes are good. That's funny. Potatoes to eat? You don't repair shit. <laughs> no, no, no. We used yams. The, no, we should have used yams. <laughs> <laughs> I thought yams. We, stood we, we used yams, yams afterwards. That's why. So that. Yeah. <laughs> I bet Nebby put the holes in there in the first place. No. From the no. outside. No, I actually, from the outside. I, I do definitely remember the the whole repairing was not something that I remember. I do remember learning about potatoes, not about their failures. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was some of the info that went. Yep. Oh, that's unfortunate. No, it's it's all right. I don't know any better. Ignorance is bliss. As well. That's true yeah, knowledge, that's exactly. right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Let me see. We are with Cleo. I assume you left the port of call to go find the albatross. The nicer place to stay that would uh, take care of you. Oh, uh, I mean, am I? I don't know if I'm going to disband from it. Well, maybe I guess Cleo actually would. Yeah, Cleo would go. Cleo would go. Okay. She's not uh, great. <laughs> no. I would say the second tallest thing in this city, mm-hmm. other than the Statue of Light itself, is a three-story whitewashed building, okay. um, similar to the stylings of Ostro and neighboring uh, uh, city of Arukatan. You find the albatross, um, and as you're heading in that direction, you pass by. Uh, a guard house Mm. um, next to a main square where you see that there are carpenters building a oh my goodness Uh, building up a an execution platform that's it oh okay where it appears like they're going to be a gallows yeah six people's gallows thank you yeah a gallows is in constructions where it looks like six people may or may not be hung in the near future. I hope it's not um, our crew. Is one of the six, right? <laughs> you don't know anything about Nebby. You forgot about Nebby. Yeah, I know. It's just, I was going to say, I wonder what happened to Nebby. I, I Nebby remember. Came with the captain. I remember that she betrayed us. <laughs> <laughs> That woman seems to know a lot about potatoes and betrayal. Just like potatoes, they poison everybody. (laughs) So you make your way to this large uh, uh, White House, uh, three stories, uh, wraparound porch. And as you walk up, you are immediately scolded by two gentlemen 
Oh my goodness. You know, it used to be nice inside where I had notes to everything, everywhere, posted. And, oh hey, that's the thing I was looking for earlier. Son of a bitch. It is run by two gentlemen. You see a sign hanging on the door as they cough curtly in your direction. And you see a sign. No over drinking. No fighting, no intoxicated guests, and leave your shoes at the door. <clears throat> and then they point down at your feet. Shoes off, please. Me? Yes, you. All right, I take my shoes off. Welcome. I am Christophe Roux. This is my grandson, Marju. And may we help you? Are you? You look like you're looking for a fancy place to stay. <laughs> Perhaps a treatment. Wait, is this like actually real, or am I about to die? <laughs> oh, we assure you. We assure you. And as the elderly gentleman is coming up to you, the grandson Marju is pulling up this high back chair, lots of cushions, an ottoman to put. Pe- Please sit down, sit down. You look like you could use comfort. And as he's saying that, he's literally pulling a twig from out of your hair and throwing it outside. Oh my God, I'm such a mess. Now, my dear, I'm love to continue to treat you with such gentle repose, but we do, we are a business and you do have to pay for the rest of our services. Can I afford this? Oh, well, our have. stay is one gold a night. You must pay for how long you're staying up front. And if you wish for an extra spa treatment, that is also a gold piece. Do I have gold? I think you do. Yeah. I don't think I ever marked it down if I have it. <laughs> <laughs> like... All right. Let's see. Where are you at here? He poor. She broke. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I have 15. Okay. Sorry. So yeah, I guess let's say yes. So a night and a treatment. Excellent. Uh, Marju, get her some kava. Is there anything else that we can get to you? Something to eat? Or would you like to go up to your room and we will draw you a bath? Um, Go up to my room. I'm just exhausted. Huh? You go in there. The canopy, mm-hmm. the whole nine yards, this white, uh, a silky linen is the curtains draping through. Same thing. The windows are opened. Let that fresh uh, ocean air into the room. This is the cat's pajamas, as they say, mm-hmm. 90 years ago. I'll bet you the cats do have pajamas in this place. That'd be so... Shh. Maybe goats get pajamas, not cats. Hey? Goats get pajamas? Goats? Yeah, goats. Obviously. Maybe goats. Look yeah, it up. You put goats in pajamas, I guess. Hmm. They're there for the goat yoga. It's part of the spa treatment, if you wish it. I was going to say, <laughs> and they do, yeah, the goats do yoga. Yeah. Oh, they no. actually do it on the roof of the building. It's very scenic. You get to overlook, you see the goddess of light. Not too far away, hand outstretched. It almost looks like she's looking at you from the rooftop as you do your downward facing dog and other yoga poses that I don't know because I'm a pigeon pose. Pigeon pose? My favorite pose. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay, good. I'm good then. (laughs) And you, uh, Cleo, have found yourself in the lap of luxury. Okay. We will go back to... uh, Riley, did we figure out what you were up to? I went to my room. I'm taking a long rest. (laughs) Taking a long rest right away. (laughs) All right. I'm going to be ready for whatever happens, like a hanging in the morning. (laughs) Well, let's get back to that. Captain Kenza, Anja, uh, and First Mate Pasala, you are all sitting around the room 
Uh, the steaming hot drink is set in front of you. I can't. I can't. I can't. Is somebody paying for this? Because I can't. I've got you for now. So the story is apparently the crew, Olo, managed to get to the city, but were acting so strangely that the guard rounded them up. When they were rounded up, I hear they confessed to their crimes. They were locked up in the stockade. The Wilkamite, the cargo, was taken by the lieutenant. Um, She told us it was island law that anything that lands on the island is the island's to own. Um, We were hoping to get there tomorrow morning and uh, recover the cargo before before she simply handed it over to the priest of Fet. Aiden interrupts. We were also looking to probably spring the crew. How do you tell? But do you know we're not what? making any money off of the ship, and we need to repair it. And we're not going to be able to sail this thing without a crew, and we can't pay a crew. Talking with Nebby, it does appear the crew had our best interests in heart. And they seemed, well, she seemed sincere that, that they didn't know what they were doing. So right now the Wilkemite is in the hands of the priests of Fett? The Wilkemite is currently being held at the stockade in okay. holding along with the rest of the crew. Captain Kenza and First Mate Pasali are hoping with your help as well to spring the crew because they cannot afford a new one to retrieve the Wilkemite and bring it to the priests of Fett so that they can make the money, the extra money that was going to pay for future endeavors, which now has to be paid to hopefully fix the boat as well as pay the crew and yourselves for helping uh, get to here. Uh, And that way they can essentially leave the island. At the moment, we are stuck here without both the crew and without being paid. We haven't had a chance to speak with the shipwright yet either, but no use talking to him until we get paid. And if the priests of Fett get the Wilkemite first, I don't think they'd be willing to pay us because according to this island law, anything that washes up ashore belongs to the island or whoever was destined to own it. Destined to own it. Um, do you have a plan? I to, to break out to spring the crew? I'm going to talk very quietly. Actually, I want to make a perception check and see if any... Is there anybody else in there with us? The two owners, um, and then you do see some sailors uh, walking in or some locals who are coming in, drinking this bowl of this steaming liquid and then walking out. Uh, No one appears to be paying too much attention to you, at least at your current perception or insight. Okay. I mean, I'm going to say if you have a plan for all this. Diplomacy. How we spring in the wait? So wait, you said the crew confessed. Did they hit, were they sentenced? Not yet, but typically the results for mutineers is hanging. I'm hoping that with you and your associates, with good words from them, 
as well as my word that we'll be able to drop the charges and they'll be released. Okay, that sounds fair. How about the, the and do you expect that the words will get us the welcome mate? I hope so. So nothing underhanded, nothing sneaky, nothing. All on the level. Well, if we don't do things on the level, we are going to be stuck here in a place that doesn't care for us. Probably kicked out of these walls where dangerous things await. Do you believe it? We were attacked by a bunch of butterflies on our way into town. I believe anything at this point. We saw a bunch of, we saw some trees that looked like they had lanterns that looked like they were people with lanterns that would basically eat anybody who came to investigate. But, but we found plants that heal. So, I mean, there, there's, there's a, there's a balance right there. Well, that's one of the tenets of the priestess of light and the priests of Fet. Volcano brings light, life, as well as death with it. But you look exhausted. When are we going to execute? When, it, when do you need us? I too. Captain Kenza just reaches out a hand. Go take my room. Go you sleep for the day. Sure. I'm sure. It's fine. And do you see one of the uh, um, island guards coming up? Excuse me. Um, Bran asked that you pick up some supplies to him and bring them to the Crafty Cauldron. Okay. Hey, so I'll take care of that. Sleep. Uh, and with that... I'm too tired to argue the points. <laughs> I figured. Yeah. Uh, and so with that, Bran... Um, you see first mate Pasela, he comes back, uh, bringing, uh, a very, very small, no, not very small, yeah, a basket amount of supplies out to you. Looks like they've got you in the cozy place, eh? Yes. Uh, ironically, I think it actually does very well. Gives a bit of privacy. And to be honest, it hopefully will steer off any people that are too curious. Though, at the rate we're going, I most likely will have plenty of uh, people looking for healing in the near future. How are the others? What's going on? As far as I can tell, everyone's getting rest. Uh, Riley has a room there at the port of call. I'm just sleeping in the captain's quarters and... Uh, we'll say, Anja, you mentioned that Cleo was off to the Albatross. If I knew that, I was off talking to the captain when she did that. So I may not even know. Yeah, you I were, mean, you could say... I you knew you that say, they got sent that direction. Yeah, before I mean, before Kenza, before he went up to Kenza, Cleo asked about that. Yeah. That's true. Mm -hmm. You can so, know that there's a couple extra rooms here. It wouldn't be bad if a couple of them stayed here for extra protection in this area since we're outside the wall. Sure. I should get some rest myself. Agreed. Um, tonight I should go meet with Marcus and find out what. Well, actually, we we're hoping that. The crew seem to take to you real kindly. We are not going to have enough money to get the folly repaired and hire a new crew. And we were hoping that you'd speak on the crew's behalf so that they will be released as opposed to being hung. My bedside manner is not exactly the best out there. Neither is my conversational skills, but I will see what I can do. I know at least one person here that clearly holds weight and a form of authority. 
though I cannot speak to any others. We may have more opposition than you believe. This place does reek of authority, and it seems to be a bit, not iron tight, I would say, but probably what people want. Mutineering? I don't know if that'll sit well with the locals. We'll just have to do our damnedest, won't we? Uh, If you want to get some rest, I'll sit here with Jeremiah. I will cook something first to make sure that he is all, he is, has sustenance and I do as well. Sure. You should eat something yourself as well. Now and, it seems in real bad taste that I ask Riley to cook food and not have you roll something. To that's, cook fine. <laughs> that's fine. That's <laughs> fine. I will be cooking uh, more or less a simple dish. Sure. Um, probably a gruel of sorts. Yum. Um, maybe um, like a potato uh, stew of sorts. Heavy liquid base sure. for, to uh, restore hydration. Plus, I basically live off of gruel, so I'm fine with it. Sure. Go ahead and roll a survival check for me. Is Jeremiah gonna die? 22. Nope. I know how to cook gruel. You know how to cook gruel. You, you've seen what Riley has done, and you do the complete and utter opposite of that. <laughs> yeah, I, I get distracted when I'm cooking. Obviously, Bran is more of a man of focus. <laughs> But with that, you enjoying your meal, Anja, sleeping in the captain's quarters. Cleo, you have not been around such luxury in such a long time that happiness and exhaustion overwhelm you as well, and you get your long rest. Riley, you were going for that long rest anyway. (laughs) So I think... With that, you wake up in the morning. Kenza comes, grabs each of you. Uh, Pesela watches slept. Jeremiah. Wow, we slept a long... We must have been real dead because we slept a long oh, time uh, to yeah, wake up I in the morning I would have gotten up before the uh, next day. Now, oh, did I say the next day? Yeah. yeah. Into the evening. I apologize. Okay. Well, eight hours from now, you're on the night basis. Yeah. Um, Aiden watches Jeremiah for you, Bran. Um, and Toa comes out again to check and see how things are doing. And he also offers to stay and watch Jeremiah. Uh, and you find yourselves gathered, walking up through the main street. Um, you find yourselves standing outside the stockade where the guards as well as their prisoners are set and still the banging of an almost finished gallows to your side and the fate of the crew rests in your hands well they're we will do next time and we will end the story here tonight uh Guys, wonderful job. No fighting, no natural ones. I'm really I'm really proud of you. Riley, I don't think I asked you to roll too much though. It is it, It's a miracle. Yeah, I think it rolled 3 times or something. All right. Say jalapeno. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's a credit to miracle. Say jalapeno. Say jalapeno. All right, guys, that is cred for this week. Join us two weeks from now. We will have some more cred. We'll figure out whether these uh, PCs do like the crew enough, or at least like Captain Kenza enough to help save those poor maddened souls, or whether Nebby has betrayed too many times and they just try and let them be hung tomorrow morning. Uh, we don't that, need a cook. I'll be the cook. <laughs> <laughs> with 
with that, you guys can follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive if you want to hit us up to play a game. Calamity, as I understand it, and I will double-check myself, there is no Calamity following Cthulhu this week. It is a one-shot, so if you do want to hop in on there, hit us up at Twitch, at Inc at gmail.com. Once again, thanks our sponsors, Pirate Dog Dice, Adventure Sense, Wonderful Smells, Decent Rolls, Dog Poop Dice, uh, Carol's Fence Post, the new scent uh, introduced by Murder Hobo. They'll get on it eventually. I'm sure they will. It's not our Carol. It's an entirely different. Yeah, thing. yeah. That's what they it. keep saying, and I think it's bullshit. <laughs> you forgot something in the original, though. In your I forgot re- something in the original. Yeah, you forget something at the top of the show. What did I forget at the top? The, of the convention. Show? Hey, I end with a bang. Thank you very much. I'm not one of you your one pop jumps who tell you about the murder hobo uh, convention coming up here soon. Tickets to be sold. Help murder hobo cancer. Sign up for some awesome one shots or multiple shots. I know DJ is running a dragon lance. Yes, I'm still planning it out right now. It, it's it, the the backdrop is dragon lance. It's more uh, generic awesome. though, so everyone one can enjoy it. Another. I know I personally won't be in it because I will have my character instantly put to sleep and then murdered. Uh, but Possibly. anyone who isn't me should definitely play in his game. Check out Mini Painting with Carol. She's also got yep. a Twitch stream coming up. Uh, we're going to have Caitlin do something. We're not sure yet, uh, but she's definitely doing Yeah. You didn't That's know what that? I'm painting, by the way. Oh, great. Oh, the, the thing's screwing oh, up. I'm not going to say it. I'm not going to say it. Look at that crazy painting. <laughs> Blunt it would really kind of cool if the backdrop actually, you know, was painted on it. That would be cool. cool. But no, she's coming out good though, and I'm giving that away. I'm giving that away to a follower who helped me uh, along the way. So, because I'm almost to affiliate. There you go. Also, keep an eye out for the one shot that I'll be introducing when you start buying your tickets. The cred inspired man in yellow. But uh, don't worry about that. That will get announced later. Uh, after that, guys, well, uh, final thoughts, or do you want to say anything else? Plug yourself some more before we leave. I should actually get, for say the Twitch, uh, the, the actual Twitch channel, shouldn't I? And the next time I go. So the next time my painting stream is live is Saturday at 1230 p.m. Okay, early in the afternoon, Eastern time. And that is at muses underscore touch on Twitch. And I am painting this go. to give it away. Harass Carol. Absolutely. I, she says anything. I'm, uh, you know, it said, uh, I bring, you know, this one, this is another mini painting. Carol, cut it out. You're making me go three minutes oh, long. Oh, no, not yeah. that. I not that. Have a hard stop, feel guys. free. Feel free. I have a That's start, right. And right. we are hard stopping right now. Everyone wave at the camera. Say hi. Hit up these people. You see all the links. Listen to their archives. They're all that fun stuff. Goodbye.